Hey, everybody, it's Pete Carmesino here at Chaykin Analytics. This is the halftime show on Stock Charts TV. Each and every week, we kind of go over just the market things that are happening. We're looking at indexes, we're looking at you know, specific parts of the market like bonds, oil, uh, interest rates, obviously, and uh, individual names um, that we call out that are either under a, cha a change in trend or uh, being affected by the market movements in that specific day. Uh, you know, we've called out defensives in the last few weeks, retailers, oil, uh, certainly uh, bonds. And today I want to focus on two really big subjects. Um, and then we'll dive into some of the underlying, what I like to call the riptide um, beneath the surface. And so, uh, you know, we got the Dow down today. We've got the NASDAQ sort of flat, really. It's only up about five points or so kind of sitting around that resistance of, you know, 4370, um, and which has really become support at that, at, at this particular point. And then the NASDAQ's up about a hundred, some nice news uh, last week off of some uh, tech names that are pushing this a little bit higher today. Uh, when I say a little bit, it's up less than 1%, which is a pretty big move considering the other indexes aren't moving at all. But, you know, this is kind of what's happening. So today I want to go over uh, we're going to look at the uh, NASDAQ pullback. We talked about this a few weeks ago. We had a channel um, that we had saw that the NASDAQ was really respecting on the way up and seems to be uh, heading uh, to the bottom of the channel at this point. So we have to see where that goes. We got a massive week uh, of news. You've got in, uh, NVIDIA earnings. You've got uh, Jackson Hole, uh, Jerome Powell speech on Friday. There's just a lot going on here uh, in the interim and a lot of retail names this particular week. So uh, just pay attention. If you're trading anything and you know earnings are coming up, just be careful uh, and just make sure you know exactly when the earnings date is going to be reported. And the best way to know that is really to go to the company page and look at the uh, date that they're uh, verified as they're reporting now. So it could be before the market or after the market. Another thing you got to check, just make sure. Um, so one of the big themes today is TLT. We're going to go over that. That's absolutely rolling over. We've been all over this trade now. A lot of people are on this now uh, and the narrative of bonds and that uh, sort of thing. It's not new. Obviously, people would focus on the side of rates. When you talk about interest rates, you know, you assume uh, bond prices should be lower because rates are going higher. And that's how they move. But I think we've been focused on the TLT, at least I have, and following that trend, obviously understanding that the other side of that trade is rates are moving higher. It's just the way it is. And really, the last thing I want to go over today is uh, Tesla, right? And I, I titled this video today, The Anatomy of a Trade. And it's really just that. It's just a trade. It was a reason to be in the name, and now there's a reason to be out of the name. And then we had some targets that we set up that were above and below, sort of a breaking point uh, that I had posted out there on Twitter in April. And so I'll go over that. We'll look at the recent tweet I, I put up in July, and then we'll look at the Tesla chart today to show you something that uh, is happening live right now. So let's check it out and see what these charts are telling us today. All right, everybody, we're here on the ACP platform, checking out a chart that you know um, I like to look at and haven't looked at in quite some time, but I've been looking at it um, in my research, but I haven't really been videotaping this. So uh, this is the S&P bullish percent. Uh, it's a four panel chart, meaning that I've got the S&P a weekly chart up here. I was calling out the rallies for a year and a half or so, about 18 months. And then below, I've got the bullish percent for the New York composite in the first panel. The second panel, the middle one here is the NASDAQ composite. And the third one is the S&P 500. All of these have broken down in the last um, two or three trading weeks, except for the composite, which today is actually bucking the trend. And we knew uh, that was probably going to be the case because the index is up today. So that's kind of where we are. I think we've um, hit that resistance up here around that 4,600 level and then rolled over. But that's where we are on that. Now let's look at the actual bullish percent index on uh, the S&P. Now, the way I learned this was that this is the red zone, meaning that, you know, you've gotten all the way uh, down, down the field using a football analogy. You're about to score and probably, you know, just trying to maybe get some points and take some profits here, right? This is where profits or points in this game. And at these levels is when this is overbought. And when it gets there, it typically rolls over. Now, the problem is you can extrapolate a percentage change and that kind of thing. But when I see 70 plus, it, I start to get, you know, I guess a little bit more leery of adding new money up here. 
down here is in the green zone is where you want to be adding money. And that's a better timing factor if you're trying to do that type of trade. But I just use it as sort of a, a, a weather pattern for the market, right? Just making sure I understand, is it really too hot or is it just mild enough to start getting invested? And that's around a 30 level. And this is around a 70. So anything above 70 is looking great. Anything below 30, you know, again, pandemic level here, look, it can go all the way down to 1%. This was extreme. You don't see this very often, but if I squeeze this in and look back just even several years prior, back to 2015, you start to get to that 25 level, even as low as 15 or so, you know, you start to feel a little bit more comfortable. That's where that contrarian point of view comes in. So just use that to your advantage. You know, it's hard not to uh, talk about the FANG index when you're talking about the markets in general. We, I've, I've put this chart up several times for anybody who's new. I kind of just looked at the pre-pandemic high for the FANG index, right? It's the FANG plus index. And uh, was really drawing some areas of support and resistance, sort of a, 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 a bracket here, uh, really a box, so to speak, of a range somewhere between the 6,800 and about 7,500 or so. When it surpasses that, it obviously got a little overbought and it's pulling back. And that's kind of what I'm seeing now. So I would think that this, 55 EMA, this is a weekly chart, uh, would look like a really good area of support. So let's see if that actually happens. But this is uh, no doubt just rolling over right in front of our eyes. All right, let's jump to the US dollar here. And I drew this chart about a week or so ago. It's not really a typical chart you see uh, technicians using. It's just something that kind of stood out to me. So I thought I'd draw it um, in the matter of uh, the art form of technical analysis, so to speak. And obviously, I've got a downward channel on the dollar. Uh, it was dramatically downward here and then kind of stabilized right around this 103, really 101 to 103 level, but it's gotten as low as we'll call that 99 and change. So, you know, 100 is psychological, no doubt. And then obviously, it seemed to settle in between, again, this 101 to 103. And when I start to see this channel moving higher and breaking this upward channel, since it hadn't done it in the past, it starts to, you know, may, you know potentially create a sign that there may be some further movement now. It's retreating on that today. And the current spot price, I'm just using a different uh, system here, is you know down about uh, 0 0.06% uh, percent, uh, down to 103.31 and a half after closing at 103.47. So it's right around here where it was um, the previous day, just a few cents off. But I think that's worth noting because this is going to be tied to interest rates. So we'll jump to the 10 year and take a look at that right now. All right, um, I'm looking at this one here today because I've um, been tracking this, um, you know, following the, the TLT, we're gonna get to that TLT chart in a second. And uh, because these are end of day quotes, um, I'm just looking at the spot price right up here. You can see uh, the 10 year now is at 4.34. So up uh, a good uh, number of basis points from Friday and getting, uh, approaching this target of four and a half to 5%. Now, look, this is a bond movement situation. Now, don't forget, I mean, rates are, are definitely pressuring from all angles here, but as a bond holder, if you are one, you know, just be aware that that's what's happening here. A lot of people are trying to time this trade. I, for the life of me, don't know why, but I, you know, that doesn't matter. The point being is, is that this is in a downtrend and that's pushing these rates higher. That's the way this works. And you just gotta be careful if you're, you have any exposure to anything in your portfolio that's bond related at this point. And looking at the TLT, this chart got a little busy here, so I apologize for that, but I'm trying to really just see what's happening on the long end of the curve versus the shorter end, or the, I should say the mid range of the curve and the shorter end, twos and tens. And then obviously this TLT represents a 20 plus year treasury bond ETF. And that long end, right, bear steepening, so to speak, is starting to push uh, those longer term rates up right? Getting, giving some relief into the shorter term and midterm rates, but really not really seeing that <laughs> at all, right? You're seeing the 10-year sort of reacting, um, you know, positively, which means that those bonds are reacting negatively. They're inversely related. So this target of 75 to 80 here on the TLT still stands. Um, it looks like it might even happen sooner than we think, but all other predictions are sort of just that they're just educated guesses. I wish I knew exactly when this is going to happen, but I'm not even sure if it is going to happen. So the point is, is that it's trending toward it. And once we break those lows, uh, obviously that that target is going to be clearly in the sights uh, of Christ at this point. 
And it wouldn't be a halftime show here without looking at the crude oil chart that uh, I've been drawing now and calling out this White House buy zone as support, which has certainly acted that way. And obviously now the trend has changed here. I've got a 55 EMA crossing above the 200. This is a daily chart of WTI crude, that continuous contract, and certainly finding some resistance in these levels of 80 to 85, and then maybe some support between 78 and 80. So, you know, I don't know if that's going to be a new trend, but it looks like it's been there before for many, many months and seems to be uh, just repeating that range trade again. However, the difference now is that the longer term moving averages are crossing to the upside. And so this backfill could just be that, but just a test of support and then moving higher. Let's hope not, but that's kind of what the chart is saying at this point. All right, let's talk about Tesla. We talked about this name, uh, you know, a few months ago, uh, back in April, I had drawn this chart and posted it. And what I was looking at was the trend change here. So this is a, around April 9th or so. And that trend change was occurring, was just starting. But, you know, it was always, you know, an option for that trend change to fail. It always is, right? We don't know if it's going to be exact or not. And there were two areas that looked to be just obvious targets, right? The previous high of around 300 and the previous low of around 100. And the stock happened to be trading around right dead center, around 195 to 200 at the time of this chart. Fast forward, and we'll look at their live chart too. This got all the way up to that level. I believe it got to around 298. We'll double check that in a second. But that was after the trend change, okay? And that's why trend changes and technical analysis is important, especially looking at this. And anatomy of a trade is, is that once it reaches a, a target that seems not only ob obvious, but reasonable, you know, that's the anatomy of a trade. Take the trade and move on one way or the other if you are a trader. But I think looking at these charts again is more like looking at game day films i call this film day for tesla and looking back and saying okay this is what happened and this is how it turned out after calling those levels out and using them as sort of targets guardrails whatever you want to call that but it was a reasonable way to look at this now let's look at the chart right now I'll type in tesla here live on the live system um and it's undergoing a it, became part of a screen that's kind of alerted me today uh something that was changing a trend now it's up big right now there's no doubt up six percent or, or 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 more but i do see uh, a bit of a trend change to the downside here occurring now i'm not saying it's going to but it did break trend there the trend was weak it got under there two or two days in a row money flow has been weak it's been oversold so no doubt it's due for a bounce but as I said to you, we'll check out that high. The high here was uh, 299.29 in July, uh, on July 19th, back from when we started looking at this around in April or so on that first trend change, okay, which was a fake out, by the way. It faked this out, went negative, and then went positive again, even at a better price. The point of this is that when you're looking at trend changes, just pay attention uh, to what's happening around the stock. What are the other levels that it could trade to? Or if it doesn't work out, where could it go against you? Now, some of these names here are just names that are changing trend as well. Um, one name that stood out was a name that's been on a nice run this year. And relative strength has been back and forth, but back to negative again and, but, and breaking trend. It's Fiserv. And that's a name that's just kind of down about 1% or so today. But other names that you might realize on here or understand or recognize, like the trade desk is looking very similar. Again, a breakdown in relative strength, money flow as well. The trend is weakening. So here are some other names here. Just take a look at them. Keep them on your, on your list. Uh, but there were quite a bit uh, of names that were changing trend. And I thought, uh, again, to the downside, I thought it was important to at least call some of these uh, out. So you can just take a look and see what's happening there. And lastly, back to Twitter, follow me on Twitter so you can see some of these charts. I'm at Pete Carmesino. And, uh, you know, I put out some interesting things once in a while. We're looking at some different levels. We had just talked about this uh, even last week. And uh, this was the TLT. And we're talking about potentially, you know, when rate cuts could happen, if that was even on the table. And it really looks like anytime unemployment starts to move up. And again, I'm not getting too detailed into this. I'm not an economist by any means, but I just wanted to point that out. Now, this was the chart that we just saw, all right, which is the, the TLT. That's when this was trading, you know, somewhere around the 93 level, and it's just been trending even lower. But one of the charts that I wanted to review was one that, you know, I had put up 
um, back, let's see here, this one here, this NASDAQ chart, right? So at around 15,000, we were talking about this particular chart. Again, the channel was moving higher and it's starting to roll over. But let's look at that live chart here to end today's video very quickly. All right, here's the live and updated chart. All right, so we were right around here and we looked at it, 15,000 psychological bounce moved higher. Here we get to a certain level right around 14,500 or so and it bounced, right? And the next level would be 14,000. And so it is adhering to the channel so far. If it gets below that channel to 14,000, it would be about a 12% pullback from the recent high. And again, if it looks, at the, looks toward the 200 day, it could be even further down again. Not saying it's going to be, but I like to use this as guardrails and kind of see if we start to break this level, then we can start building uh, other areas of support, which seem to be closer to 13,000. All right, everybody, it's Pete Carmesino here again, signing off uh, for the halftime show on Stock Charts TV. Really appreciate you tuning in. Follow me on Twitter at Pete Carmesino. You can see it in the link below and certainly leave me a like here and some feedback if you so choose. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.